The Goverland Reach Server, GRS for short, is a central authority for all Goverland services and has five primary features. The first is global policy distribution for granular control of all Goverland components, their behavior, and settings. For example, setting a policy to display a user acceptance prompt before remote control session starts. The second is logged in workstation detection, also known as FastConnect. The Reach server will log and monitor all live sessions that are active on every machine in your network that have the Goverland agent installed. It also provides auditing, centralized logging of all remote control sessions and user login and logout events. The Reach Gateway service, which provides unattended access to devices that leave your internal network or devices that are permanently off-site. And finally, License Management, which gives you more control over the distribution of your Goverland console licenses. Here are some important things to note before your setup. The Reach server is not needed for the Goverland console to function. We highly recommend the Reach server for easy centralized control of your Goverland console and agents. The Reach server is 100% software based and does not require any dedicated hardware to function. It can be installed on any Windows 2008, R2 server or above, even on a server that is hosting multiple roles like a domain controller. The Reach server does require its own database instance to function. The default is a file-based SQLite DB. For companies with over 500 machines, we recommend a SQL Server instance. Let's begin by launching the Reach server. After launching the Reach server app, you will be brought to the Server Controls tab, which displays the current status of the Reach server services. Let's review the server configuration. The first setting is the Reach Server Relationship. This gives you the ability to set additional Reach servers and off-network sites to have unified global policies, Reach Gateway services, and auditing. Since we are setting up a master Reach server, this setting can be disregarded. Next are the server settings. The server listening port is how your Goverland consoles and agents communicate directly with the Reach server. Make sure this port is available for all inbound connections in your firewall or endpoint security software. The server services authentication area is where you'll need to insert credentials that will be used to run the Goverland server and Reach Gateway services. This account must have local admin access to the server, log on as a service permission, and DB creator rights if you choose to use a SQL Server DB. The Goverland Reach server requires its own database separate from the database that your Goverland consoles use. The default is a SQLite file-based DB. A SQL Server is recommended for enterprises with over 500 machines. Simply change the DB type to Microsoft SQL Server and enter all the relevant information. Windows Authentication is the default, though SQL Authentication is also available. The Reach Gateway Service tab is used to enable external management of endpoints that are off-network. The licensing server settings allows you to redirect all Goverland console sign-in requests to your Reach server, which will forward all sign-in requests to the public Goverland licensing server. This is useful for sites where the Goverland console machine does not have internet access. You also have the ability to enable silent license distribution to provide a seamless login experience for your Goverland consoles. The error management area allows you to set preferences on how the Goverland server will handle reporting errors and events. Finally, the auditing section will allow you to set how far back the Goverland Reach server will keep logs in days. At the bottom of the server, you'll see a status of the DNS SRV record, or GPO, used to advertise the Reach server's existence to your Goverland consoles and agents. After configuring the DNS record or GPO and the Reach server detects the configuration, this message will disappear. Now that we have successfully configured all the Reach server settings and properly advertised it on our network, we can now proceed to start the server. 